This recording will go over questions that deal with prioritization, a little bit about a midterm check-in, um, some test taking strategies for fill in the blank questions, as well as ordered response questions. Uh, your midterm check-in will actually, actually be part of the discussion board since we're at week eight. Uh, we're about halfway through the semester. Uh, we're 16 weeks plus a week of finals, so um, we're halfway through. Just checking in to see how you're doing, and again, that will be a discussion board assignment. So we talk a lot about prioritization in nursing school, and if you haven't identified or sort of wrapped your brain around what that means is what's most important. Um, so another question that could be asked is which of the client's needs require immediate action? And up to this point, we've been identifying strategic words in our practice questions, such as priority, first, immediately, most concerning, those types of words and phrases that uh, clue us in to the fact that that question is a prioritization question. Now we're going to learn the strategies for answering those types of questions that we've identified. A high priority patient needs immediate attention. An intermediate priority patient, sort of on our radar, but not necessarily um, an immediate need. So they can wait a little bit. And then a low priority patient isn't in need of any immediate action at all. They can wait for quite a while. Sometimes you get NCLEX style questions that have answer options like you need to call the physician or you need to call a rapid response. Those answer options I just say in general are calling back up. Um, remember just a reminder that you do have an order uh, for any answer option that lists an intervention. If you have the option to administer medications you do have the order for it. And when trying to decide do I need to call back up or not, if want to look and see if the scenario requires backup. So if the scenario is not life-threatening, look at the answer options for a nursing action that could be relevant to the situation. And if it is life-threatening, it may be appropriate to call the backup, call the physician or the rapid response. Ask yourself when you see these, these types of questions, can I fix the patient or do I need backup? So can I, as the RN, fix the patient? Do one of my answer options provide a way for me to help the patient? Or is it a situation where I alone can't fix it or can't immediately help them, so I need backup? When to not call a physician? Um, if there's something the nurse can do immediately, such as CPR, right? I wouldn't not provide CPR so they could go, go call a physician. Um, another time would be if you don't have enough information or if more assessment is needed. So a lot of times if the stem of your question is really general and doesn't give you a lot of details or information, the correct answer option will be more assessment. So when you're looking at questions, when you go through A, B, C, D, mark down whether it's an assessment answer or an intervention answer. Because if the, if the question itself is pretty uh, generic, so your patient's restless, or your patient um, had a spinal cord injury in the past and is immobile now. They're very basic and don't provide a lot of current assessment data. Likely the answer for those types of questions would be more assessment data, not calling the physician. I'm sure you've already learned Maslow's hierarchy of needs theory. We use this with our prioritization nursing questions. Um, the way to break it down, so it's broken down into different parts. Um, these physiological needs, air, water, food, shelter, are priority needs, then safety, love and belonging, esteem. I simplify it for nursing questions down, into, down to three categories. And the categories for prioritization are physiological or physical is going to be your top priority. Because if I don't have an airway, if I don't have circulation, I'm not breathing, um, I'm not alive, and the other things aren't going to matter. So top priority, physiological or physical needs. Second priority then is safety. And the third priority is psychosocial, or I sort of call them the fluffier feelings, like the love and belonging, self-esteem, self-image. Those would be psychosocial type answer options. So you're answering a question. Look at the questions and ask yourself, are my options physiological or physical? Is it a safety answer option, or is it a psychosocial, fluffy feelings type of option? If you look at your answer options and you get down to some different types of physical answer options, 
you then have another way to prioritize those options. So I know that I've prioritized my physical over safety and feelings. Once I'm looking at just my physical answer options, I can then prioritize those with my ABCs. Airway is my priority. Breathing would be next, followed by circulation. All right, just some, an some information about assessment type answer options. Um, assessment's the first step of the nursing process. Strategic words and answer options that indicate assessment include ascertain, assess, which is the easy one, check, collect, determine, uh, find out, identify, monitor, observe, obtain information, and recognize. Um, I would say in terms of assessment, like sometimes we'll see LPNs are able to collect data, but they're not able to assess. So that's a word I'd watch out for. Um, big test taking tip is if your patient is in distress, you don't assess. So you get your, your test question, you get your scenario, you have your answer options, you look through your options, you have some assessment answer options and some interventions. It's saying if your patient's in a distress, don't assess. So if you have a description of a patient who's blue, who has a respiratory rate of nothing, uh, whose SpO2 is extremely low, it's telling you they're in a lot of distress, right? So the correct answer option for that type of question would not be an assessment answer option, such as listen to the lung sounds. Because we already know, based on what the question's providing you, that that patient's in big trouble. I don't need any more information to tell me that they're having some big respiratory issues. So what that patient needs is interventions. So what can I do to help them out? Um, recently in class, we had a, a question where the patient was unconscious. So just not much description, but the patient's unconscious. And the students were saying, but the, you know, we've learned if in distress, don't assess. So they wanted to do some things um, that were intervention related. And then the one student said, you know, because if that person came into where I work, I would be getting a set of vitals. They probably would maybe get a CT, depending on what's going on. And I said, well, stop, listen right there. You're saying all sort of assessment type things that you need to do yet for this patient. You don't have enough information to know if they're in distress, right? So it, it can be tricky, but with practice, you guys will be able to get, get it down pretty good. With analysis, we'll collect data of the client's presentation and determine if the data is expected or unexpected, determine appropriate interventions and their needs, and then we want to think about priority problems for our patient. Once we figure out our priority problems, we'll, we will generate a plan of care for our patient um, with interventions, um, goals, and outcomes that we want to meet for the patient. Answer options likely are related to nursing plan rather than medical plan, unless being asked to anticipate what would be order. ordered. So usually our NCLEX style questions, the answers will be things that nurses can do, or else it'll be to contact the provider or help prepare the provider for some sort of intervention the provider is going to do. Actual client problems are more likely to be prioritized over potential or at-risk client problems. For implementation or take action, big thing throughout all of your test taking strategies, you want to make sure that you're focusing on the patient or the client. Um, I want to make sure we address the high priority issues first. Answer is if you have all the time available to care for the client and all the needed resources that you need at the bedside. For evaluation, we want to compare the actual outcome of care with the expected outcome. Did what we hope would happen actually happen? Um, how the nurse would monitor a client's response to therapy or to another nursing action is something we'll be looking at. Evaluate the client's ability to implement self-care, so sort of teaching and follow-up. And watch for those negative event queries, which the questions were, which asked which client needs more teaching. So strategies for an answering these prioritization type questions. You want to identify the subject of the question and reword the question. Make sure you keep those strategic words like first, immediate. Um, you want to use uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So ask yourself, is this a physical, safety, or psychosocial issue? Remember, physical is going to be your priority issues. Breathing. 
blood pressure, pulse, pain would all be prioritized over safety, which is then prioritized over fluff or feelings, also known as psychosocial. Um, if you get down to the physical or physiological answer options, then use your ABCs, airway, breathing, uh, circulation, to try to pick out the right answer. What is the outcome of each of the remaining answer options? Ask yourself that as you're testing. Other considerations are the answer options assessment or intervention, because we talked about if in distress, don't assess. You know, does your patient need action or do we need more data? So review the question, look at the different answer options. If we need more information about the patient, an assessment answer would be correct. If it looks like we need to take action, then an intervention answer would be correct. For intervention answers, is there something the nurse can do to fix the patient? So fixing the problem is prioritized over avoiding symptoms. So this is an example of a situation I had in the past couple weeks where the question somehow described a patient with like super low BP and they sit up and they get dizzy. And so the, the students were able to narrow it down to either uh, start an IV and give fluids or have the patient lay down. They were torn between those two. The correct answer option for that situation is you got to go and think which one's going to fix the problem. So I can tell them to lay down, but are we doing anything to actually fix what's causing that lightheadedness when they sit up? No. So the fluids would help bring up that blood pressure and help them out that way. Uh, for that reason, the fluids is the fix, and that makes it the correct answer. So again, it's why NCLEX style questions are tricky. It can seem like more than one is correct. Um, is this a big problem? Does the nurse need backup? Do we need to call a physician a rapid response? Not all problems, just a little reminder, have the same fix. Just because one respiratory question, the correct answer was put oxygen on the patient, doesn't mean that that's going to be the correct answer for all respiratory questions. So an example of that would be you have a patient who has a spinal cord injury who um, has a respiratory rate of six breaths per minute. And then you have a patient um, who has low SpO2 related to pneumonia. Maybe they have an SpO2 of 89. So oxygen on the pneumonia patient makes sense. We're going to increase the, the percentage of oxygen they're, they're inhaling to help bring up their SpO2. Putting oxygen on someone who had a spinal cord injury that's affecting the way they're breathing isn't going to be as effective because we're not fixing the problem with their breathing. A big test taking uh, tip for you when you get these questions and it's hard to figure out which one's the right answer is to ask yourself, if I can only do one thing and then I'm going to leave the patient alone for the rest of my shift, what will I do? Because that'll help you zero in and the priority on the priority interventions that's going to be most beneficial to your patient. Another type of uh, NCLEX style question that you might see is fill in the blank most commonly going to be math. Uh, make sure that you are following any rounding rules listed and make sure you have your answer labeled correctly. Follow any math rules and then once you get your answer, go back and make sure that it makes sense. Another type of NCLEX style question that you might get is ordered responses. So you might have to place things in order from first, second, third, fourth, fifth. How would you do things? Um, on the NCLEX, it'll be drag and drop. Your paper, pencil it might have you write in for second, third, all that good stuff. Uh, prioritize nursing interventions or the steps in a procedure might be something that you're asked to do. Uh, use the steps of the nursing process, Maslow's and your ABCs when trying to order things. Is questions positive or negative? Are questions positive or negative event queries? Think about the cognitive skill being measured. Visualize the event. Sort of walk yourself through it mentally. Maybe it's starting a Foley or putting in the NG tube, walk yourself through it like you do in lab. Some things to remember with your order response. Assess the client's readiness to learn before teaching because sometimes it's not the right time to be teaching. Maybe they just got a horrible diagnosis and they're not going to be really receptive. So we want to assess the patient's readiness to learn before we start teaching. Treatments and procedures need to be explained before impl implemented. Certain procedures require informed consent, such as for invasive procedures. Always want to make sure we're washing our hands before client contact. And then at the end, we want to make sure we're documenting the client's condition or response to treatment after care. 
please review the prioritization notes that can be found near the PowerPoints at the top of the Canvas module section for some more tips about how to take uh, prioritization, how to answer prioritization type questions.